Looks like I get to hang out with the ladies of Fox News just for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so um, y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know. We about to go ahead and check it out. Thank y'all again for clicking play. It's always good to see that my LFR family. There are growing concerns about President Biden's age as members of his own political party and the media seem to be worried that he may be too old to run for re-election. Biden is already the oldest president in U.S. history and would be closer to 90 than he would be to 80 at the end of his second term. Plus, his recent bike fall, coupled with his many <laughs> verbal gaffes, wow. certainly are not helping his cause. The growing numbers of headlines highlighting Biden's age will be hard for the White House to ignore. And with his approval rating sinking, inflation sky high and worries of a recession, it's leaving some Democrats asking questions out, out loud whether the party needs a different, younger leader in the next presidential race. Now, Ben, yeah. my team told me that you literally <laughs> said these words. This topic is my jam. Yeah. He <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. These ladies are sharp. These ladies are sharp. The set is sharp. Everything about this thing is just next level, man. It's, it's, it's really nice to see. You know what I mean? It's, it's very classy. It's, it's, it shows, it tells me that they know what they're talking about. Like they know how to present a message. God dang it. I got to go buy a suit or something. I, I don't know. I'm put some white furniture behind me or something just so I can I can feel like I'm a like I'm a part of it feel a little bit more astute you know what I mean because they look good man they look good <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Biden is the useful idiot that is no longer useful oh, to the Lord? Democratic Party. <laughs> the they saw idiot. an opportunity to get the White House that's true they thought this was the safest bet and it was for them and he was a useful idiot and now he's no longer useful. And I think they realize not only do we have to get rid of him before he even has a chance to run for the presidency again, to announce, because that would destroy the Democratic Party. They understand that he is going to drag down and cost Democrats all the power they gain from him being their useful idiot over the last two years. Well, and that's his, I mean, if you're the Democrats right now, you can't look at Joe Biden and think, we need to put this guy out there anywhere. And it's not Kamala Harris either. I mean, they just lower the price to get a picture with her significantly yeah. telling you. And um, so I think yeah. they're like, what do we do now? <laughs> we got to get rid of the president and we got to get rid of the vice president. We got to bring in the new person for that's going to be the new face of the party. Well, it won't be hard to get rid of her because her yeah. her levels, her approval ratings are lower than his. But more than that, she doesn't really. Because I heard his was astronomically low. Um, so if hers are lower, that's just crazy, man. That's wow. Her yeah. her levels, Sheesh. her approval ratings are lower than his. But more than that, she doesn't have anything she can check off. He talks about infrastructure and a yeah. couple of other things that he's done. And he really wants to do this gas tax holiday. Um, Senator Lee of Utah and I were just talking, Kaylee, last hour about the fact that if he does that, he then hurts all those Democrats who might be holding out to see if he might do something great and they could jump behind him right away. But if he has to roll that tax back in right before the elections, that's going to hurt. And if he's got to extend it, that's going to hurt because Republicans are going to campaign off that. <clears throat> yeah, he uh, is now becoming Mr. Quick Fix. You know, Mr. Quick Fix has to do something, so I'll knock 18 cents off gas prices, even though my... <laughs> she called him Mr. Quick Fix and then immediately used it in the sentence. <laughs> then immediately used it in the sentence, Mr. Quick Fix. <laughs> you know, Mr. Quick Fix has to do something, so I'll knock 18 cents off gas prices, even though my predecessor that everyone hails, President Obama, said no to the gas tax. Yeah. You know, I'll wipe out student loan debt. I'll do whatever. I'm desperate because I failed at my job royally, and we've all watched as America's gone up in flames under the presidency of Joe Biden. Some people have some ideas, however, about his replacement, Harris. Take a listen. Well, you know, it's no question in my mind that Joe Biden is doing exactly what needs to be done for this great country of ours. I'm just saying that if uh, he uh, chooses not to run again, uh, first on my list after him would be uh, Kamala Harris. I like Kamala, uh, Kamala and Pete Buttigieg. I love um, Pete ticket. Buttigieg. I, love I think that looks yeah. great. You think um, they could win, really? Well, I would vote for them. Of course, I, I hope would. this country is ready for something like that. Um, I think the brain power alone would would just uh, obliterate Trump or I, and I Jeff would Francis. just love to. Okay, you know. 
Have they ever seen? Oh my grace! What am I missing? <laughs> what? No, seriously, what am I missing? Because the things that I've seen from the VP has not been that great. The bills that she backed is a huge stain on her jacket. I don't get it. I really don't get it. She's been out of sight, out of mind. And when she is in sight and in mind, she comes off as crazy. I don't I don't get it. I what I what what am I missing? This this is like bizarre world. What am I missing, man? It's crazy, man. Like I I don't get it at all. One would would just uh, obliterate Trump or I, and I Steph would just love to Okay, you know that was actually funny. <laughs> and if you've ever met Joy Behar, you know that when she gets that inclination in yeah. her voice, she's like, "You think they could win, really?" <laughs> Even Joyless Behar isn't buying the liberal spin. You know you got a problem. Please give me Mayor Pete. But, but Jim Clyburn, I mean, she called her Joyless Behar. <laughs> Behar isn't buying the liberal spin. You know you got a problem. Please give me Mayor Pete. But, but Jim Clyburn, I mean, he's the kingmaker. He was. Yeah. Uh, he made. He President delivered Biden the black president. vote, particularly in sure. his state, but but a lot of people yes. looked at him in the black community that had already been compartmentalized by this president saying, you know, well, if you're really black, you better vote for me. Um, he played a critical role. Yeah. And, and for him to be thinking next. Yes. They're all him and, and to say first on my list is Kamala. I mean, has anyone uttered those words ever? No. <laughs> you're choosing a team. Well, She's the other co-host on, on The View did. But right. I guess two people. They're the 28 percent who approve. I don't know. It was like it was like Jim Clyburn's Ariana Grande moment. Thank you, next. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Um, well, first it's 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 bo it's almost embarrassing. Um, I I wonder if they are embarrassed. They should be. I would be. I'm just saying. Same moment. Thank you, next. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Um, well, first of all, lo <clears throat> I love that you address the notion that Kamala is now on clearance, right? Because that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> She's on clearance. No one's paying full price for her anymore because they yeah. don't want to. And if we look at this, the, the concept of Joe Biden's age, if we look at it generously, right, as one swing voter said, well, it's not actually the 82 that's the problem. It's the 86. It's what it looks like at the end. Exactly, the end. exactly. And, and I don't care about his age. I want to say this. I don't. I care about competency. You can be incompetent at 20, 30, 40, 60, that or 90. That is true. It's yeah, very yeah. clear that Joe, some of you have been talking about his age. I don't give a crap about his age. I mean that. I care about this man. Yeah, because there are some sharp people who are older than him. I'm talking about extremely sharp. <laughs> and they'll, they'll outwit you in a conversation very easily. And 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 that's that's on a mild day, and don't try to play them in chess. They could have completely gone through, have have one hundred percent total dementia, and still whoop your tail in <laughs> some chess. So yeah, I get what he's saying. Some you've been talking about his age. I don't give a crap about his age. I mean that. I care about this man. Can he run the country? And it's obvious. It's yeah. not just the bike. Everybody knows falling off a bike. Yeah, it's every it single day. It's clear the guy cannot handle this job. When your wife's having to pull you away from the and telling and, the and you get scared bunny. by the Easter Bunny, you, it, it's obvious it's time to retire. Yeah. And if he truly cares about America, he should be looking at these tapes, and his family should be looking. I'm not trying to save him. They yeah. should be saying it's time for you to step down. Well, and just to be clear, the whole point is that it's in tandem, right? Yeah. So the argument that, well, if the policies were awesome, we would forgive then. We wouldn't mind the stumbles and the gaffes and the crypt keeper in front of us, right? But the point is that the policies are absolutely terrible and Americans are hurting. So they're sick of the dearth of leadership and the fact that it's the cherry on top that this person can't stand up literally on his own two feet is what's so difficult for the Americans di to digest. And keep in mind that two thirds of Americans believe in term limits for congressional leaders that go up to 70. So yeah. that right there knocks out like most of the Senate to begin with, let yeah. alone our president that is, yes, That's demonstrably really incompetent with zero mental acuity. And the fact that he's so feeble is just sort of the emperor. You are going hard, new young lady. A situation where you can't deny it anymore. But yes, we are hurting at the kitchen table. And then visually, it's just ridiculous. So Emily, yes, ma'am. part of what you said that section about if the policies were working, you might be able to forgive some things. You know what you would be able to do? You'd be able to look at his number two and say, we trust his judgment on that person if he shouldn't run in 2024. But because the policies are not working, 
You're not looking to her at that point. You want the ticket alleviated and replaced. All together, yeah. You want, yeah. Carly. You want a clean scrub. Uh, well, there are all of these articles being written right now from really liberal media outlets, New York Times, The Atlantic, mm -hmm. saying that President Biden is too old, don't run in 2024. <laughs> and I really think that this is more a media bias story from 2020, 2021 than a President Biden story because he hasn't changed. Not, uh, he's, al all. he's always no. struggled. Yeah. Um, you just remember the debate. So um, I think, the like you said, the only thing that's different now is that the media is looking for a replacement. They recognize that Biden has served his purpose. He got he's hurting out the whole of office. Party. Yeah, and now they're looking for somebody else. Jim Clyburn essentially said as much when he said on CNN, President Biden did a, a good thing in getting us through a rough patch. And now if Kamala Harris wants to run, I would support her. So President Biden is clearly, he's always been a placeholder. The only problem is that who is going to be the permanent candidate they don't really have anybody. Yeah. I think the best thing that could happen for the Democratic Party is if somebody outside Washington runs, maybe like a Mark Cuban. They said Matthew McConaughey might run, so there, there you go. Or some, you know, centrist Democrat. Is this party to too in insular to do that, though? Is yes. this the party to do? Yeah. I'm, Republicans, yes, and we saw that with Donald Trump. But this party is so insular, and they're so into that. Look at with Nancy Pelosi, who won't let go of anything oh. in the House, right? Yeah. Uh, Tim Ryan yeah. ran in her own party. New, younger blood. Mm -hmm. right? If they, there's they anything don't... Democrats are consistent about, it is the pecking order of the Democratic Party. Yeah. Yeah. They're Protocol not going to go and, outside the box There's no one here. in that order. Yeah. Look at, look, yeah. Joe Biden I mean, look at the Republican Party. You got DeSantis. You got Rubio. Yeah. You got Christine. I mean, I could sit here and list 25 people. But I they do have, have someone. They have Joe Manchin, but they don't like his politics. Joe and Manchin could never win in that party. Right. I mean, Never win. They would annihilate him in the primaries and ruin him in the primaries. And keep in mind the landscape, right? This isn't in a vacuum. There is nothing that accelerates the aging process more than the presidency. So whoever you so do true. put up there, Star right? Gears. The, yeah, yeah, there's no, this yeah. is not I death becomes her. This is like, he was struggling even a little bit before, if we're yeah. being honest. I, Look, he got them across the finish line. I don't know if you can chalk it up totally to the presidency. Okay, Biden got them across the finish line. No, I don't know who got Biden across the finish line. All I know is that he won and became president, gave them another four years to be able to do whatever they wanted to do. And throughout those, um, the first half, obviously, they believed that he just wasn't doing a good job anymore. They started losing everywhere so of course crazy old man <laughs> who's been steering the ship he gotta go so, and so is anybody that's connected to him i don't know why they're trying to separate him and kamala right now but they are connected they are and we've seen kamala um, present many different things and she just not there either so i don't get it man this they just done with them. They're, they're finished, finito. They ready to get go somewhere else right now. And they're definitely painting it like uh, to the Democrats who are paying attention. Don't worry, we're gonna have someone good to run against whoever they pull up to run against, uh, I mean, to run in 2024 on the Republican side. And clearly they don't have a whole bunch of good picks. So we shall see, but I want to hear what you all have to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing per usual, man. Love y'all. Thanks again for everything. And thank you for the microphone.